Yeah, hey folks. Um, give you all a second to, to sit down. Uh, but want to start off with <clears throat> want to start off just by saying thank you so much to all of you for coming to our talk. Um, so today you're going to hear us tell you how to do end-to-end -end encryption from your browser to your pod with a couple of CNCF projects, uh, emissary ingress and the Linkerd service mesh. So appreciate your time. Thanks. I'm Flynn from Ambassador Labs. I've been working with the Emissary English Project since its humble beginnings in 2017. You can send me an email at flynn at datawire.io, or you can find me on GitHub, and you can find me probably most easily on our open source Slack as Flynn, and we'll have links and things like that. Over to you. My Thank you much. My co-conspirator, Jason Morgan. Uh, so, hey, I'm Jason Morgan. I hope this isn't as loud as it feels from right here. Uh, but I am a technical evangelist for Buant. So that means it's my job to talk to you about Linkerd and try and convince you that it is the best service mesh on the market and you want to use it. Um, if you have comments you want to make about what I just said, feel free to email me, jason at buoyant.io. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, you can also, if for any reason you want to find me on GitHub, you can, at Jason Morgan. And you can find me on the CNCF and Linkerd Slacks as at Jason. So we're going to be talking today about a couple of things, a couple of different problems. You're going to hear us talk a lot about north-south traffic and east-west traffic, with north-south being traffic from outside your cluster coming in, east-west being service to service within your cluster. As Jason mentioned, we're going to be talking about how to set this up so that all of that traffic is encrypted all the way from your browser, all the way back through to the services. Um, we are going to be using Emissary Ingress to do the TLS termination. And that means we're also going to be using Emissary Ingress to handle the certificate that secures your communication between the cluster and the browser. And then we'll get onto using Linkerd within the cluster. But important to note that you cannot do TLS in any meaningful way without certificates, so we're going to come back and talk about that a couple of points here. So if you're not familiar with Emissary Ingress, it is an open source, cloud-native, self-service, developer-centric API gateway. So if you have a cluster, where's my laser pointer? There we go. If you have a cluster over there with uh, a bunch of services in it, and you have users who want to use it from outside, Emissary's purpose in life is to sit right at the edge of the cluster and mediate all of that conversation. It is a CNCF incubating project. Emissary is powered by Envoy, although it's also designed so that you can get started quickly and not have to spend six months of your life becoming an Envoy expert. We started, as I said, in 2017. Since then, we've seen pretty wide adoption. We're running in thousands of different places. Um, and I want to emphasize that focus on self-service. That turns out to be an important factor in our adoption, and it turns out to be something that really does work out well. So I said there's an API gateway. One of the kind of fundamental things about API gateways is routing traffic. So if we have our user Jane out in the cloud and she wants to request a quote, then Emissary can field that request and hand it off to an upstream service that actually provides it. If a user Mark hits the same endpoint, he can get over. Depending on how you have thing, things set up, it might be the same pod handling that, it might be a different pod, it might be a different service entirely. You might be doing this with session affinity, you might just be doing it to handle scaling. There's lots of different ways you can do this and Emissary makes all of them pretty simple. However, that is not the only thing that API gateways do. They're not just dumb proxies. They're also a good place to set up things that you want to manage centrally so that your developers don't have to worry about them. Probably the most obvious application there is application security. So maybe Jane is allowed to update quotes, but Mark is not. And rather than making the person who wrote the quote service worry about authentication, you can bundle that in with Emissary. It's not the only thing. You can also worry about observability, about rate limiting, about resilience if things go down. You can worry about hooks that make life easier for developing applications. And if you're thinking about this a bit, you might think that some of these overlap with things that you can do in the service mesh. That's OK. That's why, by design, API gateways work nicely with service meshes. And we tend to set things up so that you can decide where you want to do each of these functions. You can mix and match and put them at the place that makes the most sense for your organization. 
this is a quick example of some of Emissary's configuration language. All of these resources are things that you would use, really things that an application developer or a person in the developer's role would use to configure traffic routing through to their service. And then there are other CRDs for things like configuring the ports you listen on, protocols and host names, authentication, all that kind of stuff. Those are things that are sort of more of the ops role. And you know, you can have one person filling both of those roles in a lot of organizations that makes the most sense. But as things get more complex and you have more people involved, it can also make sense instead to have the ops role be separate so that the operations role person will worry more about the infrastructure of keeping the cluster happy. And the developer role is more about focusing on the applications themselves. Since Emissary does these with separate resources, it's very easy to separate these, re separate these concerns, separate these roles, and arrange it so that the developers don't have to wait for the ops role, the ops role doesn't have to wait for the developers to do things for their apps, and neither of them steps on each other's toes. And on that note, over to Jason to talk about Linkerd. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, for those that, that aren't aware, Linkerd is a service mesh. It is built to run in Kubernetes. It is, in my opinion, and I work for the company that makes it, but it is the lightest, fastest, and most secure service mesh that you can use in Kubernetes. And again, feel free to email me if you have thoughts about that. And we're going to try and, try and show you some of that today. So it's created by the folks at Buoyant. Uh, it's been in production for a really long time, and we have an active community. We are also, by the way, of all the service meshes in the CNCF, the only one to hit graduated status in terms of open source maturity. Uh, we are in use by all sorts of folks, including Microsoft, and I think just in an hour, you can listen to the folks from Xbox Live talk about how they're using Linkerd at massive scale to connect a bunch of clusters together and how it's made their lives easier. Um, yeah, we do. If you want to check out the Edge, you can see what's coming up. There are weekly Edge releases where you can try all the various features. And that's all I've got. But the thing I'd say is that the theme of this talk is that Emissary Ingress is a really solid gateway and ingress that you can use for all sorts of stuff. And we're going to integrate it with Linkerd in a really seamless fashion. Right? So we don't make expectations on the ingress or what they're going to do. Linkerd focuses on doing the job of a service mesh, not the job of an ingress, not the job of an API gateway. We leave that to others who have, who have more expertise in that space. So here I've got a little, little diagram. If you're not already familiar with a service mesh, at its core, what it is, is we're going to take some, some common functionality that you might put in your applications, like how are we going to do TLS? How are we going to get standard metrics and observability from our apps? Or how are we going to do endpoint selection? And we're going to move it out of our application code and into an entirely separate process through which we're going to route all of the traffic in and out of that application. Um, so the way we integrate with Emissary is Emissary sits there at the front door of your cluster and handles that, that north-south traffic. Uh, and then we're going to add a Linkerd proxy to Emissary. And that's going to put it in the mesh. I'll talk about adding things to the mesh. All I mean is sitting a proxy beside it and letting it begin to handle their traffic. The emissary instance here is going to have our valid TLS certificate that we can use to you know, get that nice, friendly, friendly lock when we load up a web page. And Linkerd is going to handle another set of certificates so that each workload is identified individually. They can trust who they're talking to and you know, do all the stuff that you want from Service Mesh. At core, it's going to be pretty straightforward. And we're going to stop with slides. And we're going to do a demo. So wish us luck as we hop over to a terminal. This makes sense so far? Any, any questions before we go on? Or you all want to save it for the end? All right. This a question? Actually, I think there's a mic coming for you. Just one moment. I can say it back. Go ahead. So for, well, it's for emissary. Sorry, go ahead. The question was, is there a performance hit going through emissary? The answer is that 
Yeah, but it's tiny. Um, the part of Emissary that wrangles your data is actually Envoy. Emissary is serving more in the control plane role, wrangling the Envoy configuration. Envoy is really, really fast. So can you measure it? Yes, but it's very, very small. All right, so we're, we're going to hop into the demo, and thank you very much for asking that. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hop into the demo. There's going to be more opportunities to ask questions as we go. So we're starting off, we're just, or I'm sorry, actually, you, you can talk through this. <laughs> just to just give you a heads up, it looks like I'm typing. I'm, I'm not typing, but it is happening live. You can see on the right-hand side here, these are all the pods running in my cluster. Is that big enough, or do we need to make this bigger? Looks like it needs to be a little bigger. How's that? Yeah. It's going to be hard to see, but there's just a bunch of pods running in the right. So, so I'm not tricking you about what's going on. The bottom right here is going to be the custom resources that we're using for Emissary to get our routing to work so that we can get traffic from the browser to our environment. And the left-hand um, side is where all the action is. So if you can't see this, raise your hand and I'll make it bigger. All right, thank all you right. so much, folks. So while he's doing that, uh, we're going to make him type Good. while I talk for a little bit. Um, Gracias. In the lower right, you'll notice that there's an error right now about the server, if you can yeah. read it. The server doesn't have a resource type ambassador CRDs because we haven't installed them yet because we haven't installed Emissary. So off we go. Let's get Emissary installed. Um, we're doing this in the way that we document. So the first step is to add the Helm repo, the DataWire Helm repo, which is where the Emissary Helm chart lives. We kind of lied. We already did that earlier. So error message, that's OK. Next step is very, very important. We are going to install the Emissary CRDs. You must do this for a new installation. You must also do it when you're upgrading to make sure that you have the latest and greatest definition of the custom resources that we use to configure Emissary. If you can read up in the upper left, you'll also see a shiny new namespace named Emissary System that has a deployment called Emissary API X in it. That chunk of code is there to handle automatic conversion between the getambassador.io CRDs. Actually, you can use okay. the laser pointer. Works better from over there. All right. Um, that handles conversion between the getambassador.io slash v2 CRDs and the getambassador.io slash v3 alpha 1 CRDs. It needs to be running. You shouldn't have to worry about it. Just we do need to make sure that we wait at this point to make sure that it's running so that everything works. So we will wait. And since it's already running, this won't really do anything, but that's all right. Uh, I should also point out, um, actually, never mind. We'll come back to that in a minute. We're going to actually install, Hel or install Emissary using Helm right now. This command looks kind of ugly. It's not actually that bad. We're going to install into the Emissary namespace, which we are willing to create. We will name the installation Emissary Ingress. We're going to use the data wire Emissary Ingress chart. And since this is just a demo running on a laptop, we're going to set the replicas count to one, so we only get one replica running. Don't do this in production. <laughs> and then again, we're going to wait for Emissary to actually be running. So you'll see now the Emissary namespace, and you'll see various things running. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that all of these show that there's one pod, one container running in each pod here in the Emissary Ingress agent and the Emissary Ingress pod themselves. So, so well, the reason that we're highlighting that right, is because for now, we have the one process per pod. right? But as we add things to the service mesh, we're going to add a second process. That is going to be the Linkerd proxy. And that's going to be the thing that lets you into the mesh. And there we have a running emissary. Nice. You'll also note in the lower right that the error message has changed from no ambassador CRDs type to now we have no resources. The types are there. We just haven't configured it yet. So let's fix that. Oh, no. Let's do TLS first. TLS let's is do important. Um, we mentioned earlier that to do TLS in any meaningful way, you must have a certificate for that. There are a lot of different ways you can get a certificate. This one happens to be one that we generated ahead of time from Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is cool, strongly recommended. Uh, since we are at a conference with conference Wi-Fi, we downloaded it ahead of time and saved it on the laptop. For Emissary to be able to use the TLS secret, TLS certificate, we need to install it into a Kubernetes secret. So there we go. We've got the secret ready to go. And now we're going to actually configure Emissary. So this is what the configuration looks like. 
I'm not actually going to read this line by line, um, but a couple of relevant things. The host record there is telling us that for this demo, we're going to be using this emojivoto.k8s.59s.io hostname. You'll see that in the browser. We have a mapping where any prefix arriving at that host emojivoto.k8s.59s.io, anything there is going to get routed to the web service in the emojivoto namespace. If you could page down, please. And right at the very bottom, we have some listeners that say, yeah, we're going to do HTTP on port 8080, and we're going to do HTTPS on port 8443. So happy to take questions about that. Uh, we can talk about that in as much detail as you want. Right now, let's go ahead and get it applied. <coughs> and as this is running, you will see resources appear in the lower right. Um, I didn't talk about it, but we also have hosts and mapping and things like that for the dashboard that Jason will show you as well. All right, onward. At this point, we should be good to go, and we should be able to flip over to a web browser yep. and show that Emojivoto is running. Ta-da! So at this point, you'll notice that you've got the little padlock up there. If he clicks through, the connection is secure. There's a thing up there that says certificate is valid. The browser is going through, talking to our running cluster, talking to Emissary. Emissary is terminating TLS, feeding back the certificate to make it happy, and then Emissary is going ahead and sending it through to the upstream emoji vote service. And this all works. We can vote for emojis. We can view the leaderboard. We can do all of our stuff. And nothing I've said so far has anything to do with Linkerd, because this has all been about getting Emissary running although you'll note it really wasn't all that difficult. So over to Jason to actually install Linkerd. Yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, what we've got now, we have TLS termination happening at Emissary Ingress. So we're, we're halfway there. Browser to our Kubernetes cluster, we're secured with, uh, with TLS. And now what we're going to do is figure out how do we encrypt from that Ingress all the way through to the various pods that make up Emojivoto, we're dealing with three services. We've got a web front end uh, and two back ends, one for giving us our awesome emoji pictures and one for registering our votes. Uh, so first off, I'm going to install Linkerd. We're going to do a curl to bash. Uh, I'm sure folks have opinions about that, and we're going to entirely sidestep them for this conversation. But again, feel free to put it in an email. I'm happy to, happy to listen to you there. So we're doing the install. So there's a little bit of us lying to you, but we're, we're lying to you in an honest way here. I, have, I already have the Linkerd CLI downloaded because I'm not relying on conference Wi-Fi because I'm insecure. Um, but this is the exact steps you'd use to install the Linkerd CLI on your laptop. And like I said, I'm not really typing, but when I press Enter, real commands are being entered or put in. Being run. Right, so we've got the Linkerd uh, CLI. We're going to update our path here just to make sure that it's available. And now we're going to check our version. So I'm running the latest Linkerd 2.11.2. .2. That's on the client side. And I have nothing on my, uh, nothing on my Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to make this smaller, because what we're going to see, I'm going to install it, and a bunch of stuff is going to happen. But first, Let's validate that this actually is going to work. So here, we've got a situation where I'm running a K3S cluster on Docker desktop using WSL on Windows 11 uh, because I like to live dangerously. So let's test. Because he's insane. <laughs> we'll test just how crazy it is and see if we can really do what we want to do using the Linkerd CLI. So what I'm hoping to see is a bunch of check marks. And I got my final. All checks are checked. And with that, we're going to install Linkerd. So here, the Linkerd CLI is going to generate a bunch of YAML. Right? Y'all are probably used to it here if you're at KubeCon. Uh, it's going to generate it, and I'm going to submit it directly to the Kubernetes API. You can install Linkerd via the CLI. You can install Linkerd via your favorite GitOps tool. You can install Linkerd with Helm, and you can install it with any other particular set of fantastic continuous delivery tools you feel like using. And then once this is done, we're going to actually check that Linkerd is installed and happy and healthy. So less talk, more action. Uh, so we can see some pods popping into existence on the bottom here. Uh, these are the, the components of the core Linkerd install. So we have an identity service, 
It's actually going to generate the certificates that our individual workloads are going to use as they identify themselves and work together on the network. Uh, we have a proxy injector, which is a mutating webhook that's actually going to go when we have add an annotation to a workload or a namespace that says, please add the Linkerd proxy. It's going to go ahead and add the proxy for you, and all you're going to do is, is one line of YAML. And last but not least, we have the destination controller, which is going to help you decide or help Linkerd decide what to do with your traffic. And now that our check marks are once again uh, happy face here with the green check mark, we're going to go forward. So this is a demo, and Linkerd is broken up into a couple parts. So I want to show you all what you know, a fancy dashboard looks like with Linkerd. You don't need to use it, but I use it every time I demo it. So I'm going to use the Linkerd visualization component, and I'm going to install it here with Linkerd CLI. Exact same process you saw before. Uh, we're going to present you, audience, with an option. You can ask a question here, or you can hear me tell a terrible joke while we're waiting. All right. Don't um, do it. You haven't heard it. It's terrible. Now you've chosen your fate. So I have a, I have a UDP joke for you. You may not get it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I warned okay, you. Next time we do this talk, you're just going <laughs> to... Next time we do this talk, you're going to just, you know, render the Linkerd check in interpretive dance. Right. Oh, that's the next one. Uh, so what we've got here is the visualization components are being installed. So we have a little metric server. We have a Grafana and a Prometheus. So this is an in-memory Prometheus. When you go to production with Linkerd, we recommend and have documentation for how you can use your own Prometheus instance or federate this in-memory Prometheus with the rest of your Prometheus infrastructure. Right? That's a, a bit of advice. Otherwise, you can get like four, six hours of metrics at best, <laughs> which isn't necessarily what you want. Uh, we've got our green check marks, so we're going to go forward. Up until now, all I've done was get Linkerd running. So we're going to actually integrate Linkerd, or we're going to add some things to the mesh. So we've got that emoji photo application, and it works. We have emissary ingress, and it works. And our, our idea here is that if you use a service mesh, you should be able to add your applications that work in Kubernetes, and after you do it, they still work, right? Just marginally better. <laughs> So that's the, that's the hope here, and y'all can, can keep me honest. Let me know if that's going to be true. So here is the horror of integrating emissary ingress with Linkerd. We're going to get the deployment. Again, there's tons of ways you can do it. I'm going to do it very manually. I'm going to get the deployment. I'm going to output it as YAML. Then I'm going to send it to the Linkerd CLI. And the Linkerd CLI is going to look like, all right, is this YAML? Yes, awesome. Is it deployment? Yes, awesome. And it's going to add one line of annotation that's going to say linkerd.io slash proxy or slash inject colon enabled. That's it. And then when we run it, we get ourselves a couple things. The thing I'm going to tell you about first is we're going to get a new instance of the emissary ingress, right? That now instead of one container per pod has two, the emissary instance itself and the linkerd2 proxy. Uh, we also get a warning because I installed this with Helm and then I modified it manually, and Kubernetes wishes I wouldn't have done that. But. Presumably, it's just as easy to go and add that annotation directly using your favorite GitOps stuff anyway, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you want an example, uh, GitOps Con is going to be coming up sometime in the not-too-distant future, and we'll be able to show you that there. So that's, that's the emissary integration. 100% of it. We're not modifying the emissary CRDs. We're not changing certificates out. We're not doing anything beyond that. Now, to get it all the way through to our Emoji Voto application, we're going to do the same thing we just did, but we're going to do it for the Emoji Voto components. Once again, we're going to add an annotation. I could have done this at the namespace level, but I wanted to show you all the glory of the CLI. And we're going to go ahead and put that in. So once again, we're going to see pods roll. So Emoji Voto just doubled in size. Right? Yeah, perfect. Just doubled in size because we got uh, all new components, all of them now having the um, Linkerd proxy added in. So this isn't like crazy exciting because everything just worked. Right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> let's load up. Everything's uh, supposed to just work. Let's load up the app and see if that's still true. So let's vote on our favorite. Oh, it still works. You see that? I've still got my valid TLS certificate. My connection is secure. I can, I can vote well. on my sunglasses. That's good. 
We lost all our votes from before because this was everything was stored in memory and it's gone, but that's life. We're going to turn on a little auto refresher. Yes, please. And so this is just going to refresh the page over and over again so we can run some traffic through and we're going to watch uh, the browser to emissary to our various emoji voto components through the dashboard. Speaking of which, we have the Linkerd dashboard. Right before there was no backing service, once we configured Emissary to talk to the dashboard, all we have to do is actually make a dashboard exist, hit refresh, and now I've got a bunch of metrics about my environment that I didn't have before. I haven't modified the Emoji Voto app. You can, you can take it on faith or you can actually go play with the app itself. There's nothing Linkerd specific happening here at all. Right? We added the proxy and now we're ready to go. Uh, a little, little fun fact. Um, well, no, no fun facts where you don't have enough time. <laughs> uh, we've got a graph of the way it works. We've got a view of all of our components. Uh, and we can go look at our web front end. And we can see that the web front end sees that it's talking to emissary ingress right? and going all the way through. We can see the individual API calls that are being made to our environment, right? both from Emissary and from the other components within the environment. We can see whether or not those calls are successful. I haven't instrumented tracing. There's no like Jaeger behind the scenes or anything like that, although this does integrate with Jaeger if that's something that you're, you're interested in. But is there some way we can verify that it's actually doing that's end -to -end a great, encryption that's all a great the way question. through from emissary, emissary so, to the service? So I'm telling you, you know, there's, there's MTLS here, but how do we know for sure that that's going on? Well, you're still, I'm still actually going to ask you to trust me, but I'm going to show you some output from the Linkerd CLI that's going to look at the various requests and tell you what it believes the TLS status is. So here I'm going to do a tap. I just want to grab the metadata about every single request that's flowing through the environment. There's a lot going on here. I'm going to output it as JSON. It's going to be messy, but um, we'll, we'll figure it out together. All right. So here I can see an individual request. I can see a lot about an individual request, including the source, destination, all sorts of stuff. Uh, in this case, our source was emissary ingress, which is convenient because that's what I'm trying to prove. And then our destination is emoji voto. Great, the web component. And it was TLS the entire way. And that's our whole story. So, thank you, folks. Yeah. One thing I want to reiterate through all this is that after we installed Linkerd, we started off by installing Emissary, configuring, configuring the routing for Emissary, configuring the routing for Emissary. Then we installed Linkerd. We did not touch the emissary configuration after we installed Linkerd, other than injecting the one annotation that you were talking about on the emissary deployment itself. We didn't go back and touch the mappings or any of the other stuff for the cluster. We simply put the two things in there and worked, which is what CNCF projects are supposed to do. So again, no configuration changes after that. Yeah, thanks any so much for joining us. Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Go ahead, he's going to come with a uh, mic, I think. Well, or sorry. actually, he's going to pick who's going to get it. So. We'll, let, we'll let Randy do his job. Pardon me, I'm not. <laughs> I don't claim that power. Thank you, uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. Uh, I have a, like, a question. Uh, how, how does LinkedIn solve this uh, cross cluster communication? Let me, let me see if I have two clusters in yeah. two different regions. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the question was, I believe, how does Linkerd do cross-cluster communication? Yeah, so we use those Linkerd proxies. And essentially, it, when you add Linkerd multi-cluster, you get into more complex Linkerd, but it's not brutally complex. You're going to install a component called the Linkerd multi-cluster component. It's going to create two new services, one on each cluster. And those services uh, are going to have an external load balancer. They're Linkerd proxies. And then we're going to link those, those clusters together with a CLI command. We're, we're going to get some service counts and permissions and role bindings and all that goodness from one cluster. We're going to add it to the other. And then they're going to begin speaking. They require a layer 7 HTTPS connection between them. So no routing requirements, no assumptions about your network. Right? And each service or each pod, when you go to make a call between clusters using Linkerd, 
you call to what looks like an in-cluster service, right? So I'm going to call to you know, remote service dot my namespace dot cluster dot local, and then Linkerd is going to handle routing you to your gateway in your cluster across that HTTPS connection between your, your clusters, and then from the gateway to your application. And if you'd like to know more, I'd love to hit you up on email and just give you a whole walkthrough of multi-cluster. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate the question. Anybody else? We've, we've, got, got, a, we've got an online question. Okay. Um, oh. Any plan to um, integrate Linkerd with gRPC proxyless mesh? Well, so uh, proxyless mesh, I, I don't know. But Linkerd, you wouldn't, there wouldn't be a lot of point, right? Like Linkerd does gRPC load balancing for you, right? It's one of the first use cases that it tackled. So if you're doing gRPC uh, in Kubernetes, if you add Linkerd to it, you will get request level load balancing, you'll get proper distribution of your gRPC requests across all of its servers, and you'll find pretty dramatic performance improvements. In fact, there's a CNCF case study for a company named Entain. They built a massive gambling platform on top of, uh, on top of Kubernetes, and they, used, they said with Linkerd that they achieved over a 10x improvement in their scale while driving down costs. And that's a, a CNCF case study that they published. Thank you. Great demo, uh, first of all. Thanks. Um, I'm Thanks. really interested in um, encryption, and you showed us how to inject a certificate. I was wondering if you could uh, integrate Cert Manager, and especially uh, how secure it could be to communicate internally, uh, service to service, and it, if you could um, generate each, for each uh, connection different certi certificate. Yeah, so we do already. So you, you do get a unique certificate for every single pod, right? And those certificates by default last 24 hours, and they're going to be tied to the Kubernetes service account that you create with it. We recommend for production users, and we have a, if you're looking at running Linkerd in production, look up Linkerd production runbook. We publish it, we tell you what to check and what to do before you go to production with, with Linkerd. And again, you have my email, hit me up, I'll just talk to you about it. Uh, get you ready for it. But one thing we want you to do is use something like Cert Manager to rotate the intermediary certificate that Linkerd uses to issue workload certificates. And if that's a lot, again, happy to talk about certificate architecture in Linkerd with any of you. Did, did that help? Did that answer your question? Awesome. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Well, uh, Linkerd uses a sidecar-based model. Um, That's right. How do you look towards the eBPF things that are now starting? Yeah, so eBPF, like, so there's kind of a lot here, right? But eBPF <laughs> is a way to get stuff into the kernel without getting it into the Linux kernel, right? And so there's all sorts of stuff you can do with eBPF. Like, say you're using something like Cilium, you can replace the way IP tables works with their eBPF module. And so the way we work with Cilium, actually, uh, you're going to be doing a, a demo on it tomorrow, I believe, right? that shows you how you use it. So Linkerd consumes the network. We don't make assumptions about it. We just ride it. We're at, you know, if you think of the TCP IP model, we're at layers four through seven. We don't care about layer three. We let you do it however you want. So if you're running an eBPF module that replaces the way networking works or changes it to make it more efficient, go nuts. We love it. We consume it natively without really interacting with it. Did that help? Awesome. Thank you. And feel free to bug me more if you want me to go longer. Uh, first, thanks for the demo. Uh, can we achieve zero trust network with Linkerd? That's a big question. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, because no one, I think, can challenge me right now, because we're out of time. Uh, but I would say. If you define zero trust networking as every single interaction between your services and Kubernetes is based on an allow only model, where I can say only pods that have the identity of X are allowed to talk to pods that have the identity of Y, you can do that with Linkerd policy. And that's actually as of Linkerd 2.11 that you can use policy to do that. Uh, and there's some big improvements in the way we do policy. So right now, 
Linkerd 2.11 was the first iteration in which we introduced the ability to do policy, right, or, or zero trust. If, that's a bit marketing term-wise, right? But that concept came in in 2.11, and there's a big refactor coming in 2.12 that should make it a fair bit easier to use as well as more granular. And Linkerd 2.12 should be out fairly soon. Did that, did that help and answer your question? All right, awesome. Thank you so much, folks. This has been amazing. Thanks very much, everyone. Awesome talk. Thanks, everyone.